once again to the topic of new battery technologies. Um, Terence Cryan is here with Westwater, and uh, this will be our final session before we break for lunch. So please uh, welcome Terence. Good afternoon. And uh, happy Pi Day to all the math nerds out there. Hopefully the Cornell Club uh, took note of that when they were putting together today's uh, lunch menu. So I'd like to talk today about my favorite critical mineral, graphite. And graphite's an essential part of batteries for both EVs and battery energy storage which is the enabling technology for many renewable power sources. Graphite is the anode material in a lithium ion battery. And there are currently 14 gigaplants announced or under construction in the US. And all of them will need graphite anode material. The US is currently 100% dependent on imported anode material, with the vast majority coming from China. Graphite anode material represents 50% by weight of a typical lithium ion battery cell. You may be surprised to see lithium and cobalt represent less than 10% each. Perhaps we need to rename it the graphite nickel battery. Each of the last two administrations have designated graphite a critical mineral. The White House has also invoked the Defense Production Act for the first time since the 1950s to ensure availability of critical minerals such as graphite. The importance of the Inflation Reduction Act to standing up a domestic industry to support the energy transition cannot be underestimated. A 10% tax credit on production costs of critical materials, including graphite expansion of the $7,500 clean vehicle tax credit. The IRA also sets a minimum domestic content threshold to claim the full clean vehicle credit. The impact of the IRA on customer interest in domestic sources of critical battery materials has been significant. Those 14 gigaplants all need graphite. I have to say that I love this chart by Benchmark Minerals. The Chinese capacity is in blue. The rest of the world is yellow. The red line is expected anoid material demand. What you can see is that even with significant investment in increasing the global supply of natural graphite anoid production, there's a tight supply market leading to a shortage of material after 2029. In the US, supply shortages may occur sooner and be magnified by the 14 new battery gigaplants coming online, the impact of the domestic content requirements of the IRA, and the legislation already enacted in New York and California, phasing out the sale of new internal combustion engines in 2035. Battery markets are growing globally, with the most significant markets being transportation and energy storage systems. Again, the enabling technology for many renewable energy sources. Those are also the markets 
West Water is focused on. So why is West Water focused on becoming the first vertically integrated U.S. producer of battery-grade graphite? This slide tells the story. Natural graphite flake sells for around $1,000 a ton. Graphite anoid material sells for more than $9,000 a ton. That's a value multiplier of more than 9x. This is my last slide. And it attempts to provide a quick snapshot of some significant announcement that Westwater has made just last week regarding our Kellyton, Alabama graphite processing plant, which has been under construction for more than one year. In response to increased market demand and an agreement with a tier one battery manufacturer, Westwater has optimized our original phase one definitive feasibility study. We are doubling our throughput capacity to 16,000 metric tons. Our capital costs are now expected be 271 million versus 202 million. And the result of that is an increase of 3x in the project NPV to 417 million and a 65% increase in the project IRR to nearly 25%. After funding a year of construction at Kellyton, we ended the calendar year 2022 with 75 million in cash and no debt. So to fund the balance of phase one, we also announced a $150 million non-binding term sheet for debt financing. Oh, and we also doubled our planned output for phase two to a total of over 40,000 metric tons per annum. With commissioning at Kellyton expected to occur later this year, it's an exciting time for Westwater. I'm happy to take a few questions. Right in front. Hi, I'm referring back to your chart where you showed the sources of graphite um, and the purple or blue was China and the yellow was the rest of the world. If there's so much more of the yellow, why are we 100% reliant on China? As I mentioned earlier, there's, there's currently no graphite anoid material being produced here in the U.S. We're importing all of it. And most of that um, yellow band is really um, new capacity that's under construction or coming online. China represents more than 90% of the market today. Okay. What is the base material you, that you're using? I know some people have talked about using biochar um, as the starting material for uh, graphite for batteries or are you using uh, petroleum resources? Uh, we're using natural flake graphite. We're not using artificial graphite. questions what what's the history the reason why there has been such low production in the United States historically it's a good question um, I think a lot of it had to do with um, with cost and uh, a lack of investment and perhaps you know not a clear understanding of what was going to be required in order for us to successfully make this energy transition Right here. Uh, to that point, I guess you're, you're mining a subterranean asset, uh, as a mineral. Um, it, your capacity, it, do you have enough capacity a, a, in America to sustain, or, or when do you get to a point where you and competitors are fighting over the, the, the last known resource that you've discovered or something? If that makes sense, I have no idea right. if that makes sense at all. 
So we also control a graphite uh, resource in Alabama, which is about uh, 30 miles from our processing plant. Um, we published a resource uh, report on that uh, last December, and uh, we have enough reserves there, having only explored about 10 percent of our mineral rights uh, to operate this plant for more than three decades. You got it. Um, quick question. Uh, what are the main challenges you are facing with uh, off-takers? So, um, graphite anoid material is, is not a commodity. You know, it's not traded on the LME. Um, it's subject to a really vi uh, rigorous uh, qualification process. And so, um, you know, we started operating our pilot plant uh, about a year and a half ago, producing samples for customers. Um, we're now at a point where we've, you know, supplied samples to more than uh, two dozen customers. We have uh, six letters of intent signed. Um, our plan is to have all of our uh, throughput for phase one committed, you know, prior to beginning commissioning. Last questions? Wow, right here. When do you start? When will you start making money? You know, um, as you saw on the one slide, where you know the value creation is about nine x uh, between taking uh, graphite concentrate and and producing uh, graphite anoid material, uh, we think we can start making money uh, shortly after we uh, ramp that plant up to full uh, capacity, phase one capacity, which is currently planned for um, early 2024. When you showed the slide of the plant, there were some numbers, I forget, 40,000, I think you said. What, what, what kind of a dent in the, in the gap would a plant like that supply, and what's the potential for what you can fill? So to, to give you a sense of you know, how much demand there's likely to be with 14 giga plants currently announced or under development, at 40,000 metric tons per annum, we would supply essentially one of those giga plants. So maybe it's time to start thinking about phase three. Is graphite common? I mean, I know nothing about mining graphite. You have a, a place in Alabama. I mean, is it, is it abundant in the United States in general? Um, it is not abundant in the United States, but it, there is a history of mining graphite uh, in the state of Alabama, and it was mined there uh, during the Second World War uh, really to support the steel industry. Uh, but it hasn't been mined in Alabama. Uh, since the early 1950s. 